Gluten Abend, everybody. Hope you're doing great. This is Dr. Doe, episode number three, the show where we will be reviewing your breaths. Now, I asked everybody of you to submit a few of your breaths um, as a post, and you just added some of your amazing pictures as a link there. And we're going to have a look at the top submissions. And it's not just going to be me reviewing them, but I will also be highlighting a couple of the comments that you're posting and let's have some fun together. I figured this might be a little bit of a more interactive way to do the Dr. Doe series. <laughs> so hope you're doing great. Um, I'm Hendrik, I'm from Hamburg, Germany. It's so amazing to have everybody from all around the world. Where's everybody from? I know we have somebody, Gapies is from Washington, Cifazio, Chicago. <laughs> Uh, I'm also just going to be sharing the link one more time in case you want to be quickly uploading uh, your bread over there. Joss, hi. Nice to have you on the stream as well. JW, good evening. And uh, ah, you're from California, Joss. I didn't know. <laughs> Caro, moin. Harry from England. Catherine from Hamburg. So many people here from Düsseldorf. Kenny from the UK. Jackson. I've seen you before. Um, then we have Sam Reeves. You're in Los Angeles by Turin, Gregor, and Herr Müller, <laughs> and Angelica there as well. Awesome. So many people around. Schweiz. Nice. Schweiz, Schweizerdeutsch. Special way of speaking German. Sometimes I have some issues understanding uh, Schweizerdeutsch. <laughs> But we also here in the north, we speak a strange German dialect. It's called uh, Plattdeutsch, just some random trivia. Uh, how would you say, for instance, um, uh, how are you would be regularly in German, wie geht es dir? But in Plattdeutsch, that would be, wie geht dir das? <laughs> My grandpa, for instance, he didn't speak proper German. He was only able to speak Plattdeutsch. <laughs> awesome. OK, great. So many people around here. You are all amazing. Um, let's have a look. I'm going to be sharing my screen now. Uh, share screen. OK. Share this screen application window. This. <laughs> uh, Bas from the Netherlands, Utrecht. Uh, then we have Merle Beach, Marta. Awesome. And Denmark, Simon, Carlos from Peru. See? here every from all around the world italian this is amazing uh, rs from sfo all across the globe and then here even from texas for instance and aachen oh there's a funny story about aachen so aachen uh, is a city in germany famous for its university i would say and there's also a small fountain in the city center where you can drink stinky water because it's uh, on top of some kind of volcano, volcanic source, and it really uh, smells like rotten eggs, but the taste of it is somewhat normal, just uh, some random trivia. <laughs> <laughs> then some from Israel, I'm unfortunately not able to pronounce your name. Hello, Oregon. Uh, then we have Juan Carlos from Bloomington. <laughs> and some Polish here, Angelica. Chish, I guess, is the proper name to way to say that. <laughs> okay, so you are able to see my screen. And Andrea Di Michele, are you also in the live stream? Yes, you are. You need to enlighten us a little bit. Outside and inside. He has been doing a bread with spontaneous fermentation. Now, I'm very curious how that is done because I've never done bread like that. Let's have a look. Outside spontaneous fermentation and then here the inside of this bread and oh my goodness look at this amazing bread so who of you has heard about spontaneous fermentation <laughs> this is amazing i only know spontaneous fermentation back then in the old days when you were making wine or when you were making beer for instance you would just pretty much mix everything together. And then there would be spontaneous fermentation occurring from natural yeast, from natural wild yeast. So I'm very intrigued to see 
how this is actually done. No sourdough, no yeast. Who of you knows how spontaneous fermentation is done? And by the way, this bread looks pretty much perfect. You have a nice crumb, somewhat wild, excellent oven spring, and a good crust there as well. This will be a 10 out of 10. I wouldn't know how to improve this bread. And now spontaneous fermentation. <laughs> so uh, you need to explain us, Andrea, how exactly is this spontaneous fermentation done? Going back here, he believes he made this bread with spontaneous fermentation. And he says it has much more potential than sourdough. And indeed, in the last years, it is taking much more space in the bread making landscape. So could this be the next big thing, spontaneous fermentation? <laughs> uh, hello, Daniela. Hello, doctor. <laughs> nice to meet you as well. So personally, if you're able to make a bread like this, then you have achieved everything in the sourdough game. There's not much more to say. So, yeah, spontaneous fermentation, the way I understand it is, there shouldn't be, well, there should just only be wild yeast inside, but nothing else cultivated. So um, not sure if Andrea is still around. Maybe he can enlighten us a little bit later. I would be very curious to know how this is happening. This would also be worth exploring as a video, I guess. This is really interesting. <laughs> okay, let's move on for now to the next bread. Um, Ivy Chan, hello, Dr. Doe. I baked a 50% whole wheat with some raisin yeast water at 80% hydration with fresh milled winter wheat, loaf and crumb. Let's have a look at this bread. Ooh, look at that. Nice blisters here on the bread. <laughs> and beautiful oven spring. Great. This is looking very good. There's one, one super pocket and you already specified a shaping mistake. Yes. So this is something that can easily happen sometimes. If there are overly large pockets, then this could be, for instance, from shaping or when you're kneading your bread. Sometimes you're kneading your bread and you're seeing very large pockets. Signs are or chances are that those are turning into, super, into a super big pocket in the end. Uh, and I think you don't want that. You want to have those tiny pockets here induced by the natural fermentation. <laughs> yes, Kauro saying thick hole. <laughs> exactly. So right. What are your comments uh, on this bread? What do you think? What else could have possibly been approved? Or are you saying this is the perfect bread? I'm very curious to read what you have to say about this. Look at this crumb here, a little bit of an ear, some pockets here towards the top of the loaf. Um, but other than that, very, very good oven spring. What would you say? about this bread, nailed it or some things to improve? <laughs> That's the Nutella hole. <laughs> yeah, you would for sure uh, lose some Nutella inside of that thick hole. And Caroline is saying, nice bunny. Yep, you're right. So for everybody who does not know, the bunny shape, which you can see here a little bit, it's a sign of a good sourdough bread. You have oven spring, you score your bread, and then your bread is going to rise through that weak spot upwards. And that's what's called the bunny shape. <laughs> uh, Gapey is saying, anytime during shaping or folding, I always squeeze out any air bubbles that form. Uh, yes, you can do that. And actually some recipes are requiring that. They don't want you to have those large pockets of air and they want you to degas the dough a little bit. So that's a chance, something you can do. But then of course the crumb is also gonna be a little bit less wild. It's personal preference, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and then Gregor, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, is saying, I think it's very nice. Uh, yes, I think so too. This one is really turned out really nice. And Christopher is saying nice crust uh, on the bottom. And yes, you're right. I think this is also, if you can see that right here, this is a sign of a good sourdough bread as well, that you have a good crust. 
And me personally, I get the best crust when I'm baking inside of a Dutch oven. On a stone, not too much. And that's because the stone in overall can store more heat, but it cannot transfer that heat as fast as, pos as fast to uh, the dough like a steel, for instance, can do. And that's when, for instance, when you're making pizza at home in your home oven, which can't go so hot like an oven in Naples, for instance, in Italy, then it's much better to do that with a steel because the steel, it cannot store as much heat, but it can transfer the heat faster to the product. And um, to me personally, I always get the best bottom using a Dutch oven. And yes, so really nice uh, looking bread from the bottom as well. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Jackson is saying, what time is it here? Time in Germany is around 8 p.m. right now. <laughs> and mobile phone is saying spontaneous combustion would be worse. Yes, uh, you're right. Spontaneous combustion would be worse. <laughs> um, Ivy Chan is asking a question. Hi, Ivy. How's it going? How necessary is it to feed the starter with bread flour to build strength? Is it just tradition? I switched over to 100% whole wheat, by the way, courtesy to your video. Um, I always feed my starter with whole wheat flour. I never actually made a bread flour starter. I had a starter die on me once because I was using cake flour for it. And it makes sense because in whole wheat or whole rye, you have much more nutrients available for the yeast and the bacteria. And I wouldn't say that's necessarily bad. Uh, overall, I think the whole wheat and the rye also adds great taste. Of course, that flour might not be as strong as the bread flour, but I think that's a small price to pay for a more awesome tasting bread in the end and a healthier sourdough starter. <laughs> uh, Bas is saying, I think shaping mistake too. Nice bread. Why is it yellow? That's actually a good question. Why is this bread <laughs> slightly yellow? It could be a filter or it could also be the flour maybe. And I think you're right, boss. I think this uh, is a shaping mistake. Yep, probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, let's go to the next bread. So good job here, Ivy, really well done. That's looking excellent. Maybe you can answer in the comments real quick why you think or why the bread is slightly yellowish. That would be very, very interesting. Um, Awesome. Okay, then Les Essentials photo. Gluten talk, my friend. Gluten abend. <laughs> Here's my latest baking attempt from today. Image er. Okay, let's have a look at this. 400 grams of T65 flour, whole wheat flour, water, sour. Okay, sourdough starter. Looking very, very nice. Okay, let's check out the actual bread. Are you ready for it? <laughs> oh, wow. Good job. That's quite some oven spring you got there. Look at this fancy ear. And please do join me with some comments on what you think about this uh, bread. I would very much appreciate doing a discussion and evaluation of this bread together because this way everybody gets better. Nice looking ear over here. And beautiful scoring pattern here on the side as well. Good job. This is really nice. Just one thing, Alexander is asking, how do I send a picture of my beginner bread? So I posted a post on my profile on the YouTube account. And uh, just, I also included the instructions there. You can go there, I think it's under the community tab and simply just post a link to your bread over there and then we can have a look at it together. So <laughs> just on the previous, uh, on the previous bread, Ivy was, we were asked, we're wondering why is it a little bit yellowish? And Ivy just said, it's hard white winter wheat. Very interesting that that has this yellowish color. Reminds me a little bit of einkorn. But back to the other bread now, Caroline is saying gorgeous, good looking bread. Let's have a look here at the crumb as well of this bread. Those seem to be some flex seeds. I think that's the right name. Esgi is saying, looks amazing. Gregor also saying, looks amazing. Joss saying, nice ear. <laughs> uh, CRT is saying, not baked long enough, in your opinion. Interesting. Marky saying, 
Very nice. <laughs> uh, Kenny is saying that looks super. Was that without a Dutch oven or with a Dutch oven? I don't know. Um, Angelica is saying, I'm in love with this ear. So um, Rick Lamp, very nicely shaped. What hydration was, this, was the dough? I think roughly 60% if I recall the recipe correctly. And Andrea is saying, seems under fermented. <laughs> Um, yep, I think I just want to continue talking about this with Andrea's comment highlighted. I think so as well. This is really an incredible ear that we have there. But now that I look at the crumb, for instance, the crumb seems relatively dense. And if you get that big of an ear, sometimes you have to be a little bit suspicious. It could be that you simply did not ferment the dough uh, long enough. Sometimes I feel that if you just directly bake your dough after the bulk fermentation, for instance, you get this really, really, really big ear because your dough is very strong and springs upwards. And just looking at the crumb here of this bread, I think also this one could have fermented for a little bit longer. I'm not saying that it has to have an open crumb because that's just personal preference, but based on how the crumb looks, um, this it seems like this could either have bulk fermented a little bit longer or proofed a little bit longer. And the bulk fermentation for how long you should bulk ferment that always depends on your flour. In general, the more gluten you have inside of your flour, the longer you can ferment your dough. This also means that the longer you ferment your dough, you the more you're going to inflate it. Um, you have to be careful with the bulk fermentation to not overdo it. So I think what you did here. Uh, was a very smart choice. You didn't bulk ferment as long, but that's a safe bet. So um, it depends on what you want, but bulk fermenting less is a safe bet. But if you want to have a little bit of a more fluffy crumb, then you need to extend that bulk fermentation for a little bit. I always recommend to start maybe a 25% size increase during the bulk fermentation and then work yourself upwards. For the flour that I'm using, I can easily ferment until 100% uh, size increase. But in the end, it also, of course, depends on what you want. Do you want to have a more dense crumb like this? Do you want it to be a little bit more fluffy? That's all personal preference. <laughs> <laughs> and chia seeds. She's also saying that looks like chia seeds. Yes, that could be. Or flax seeds. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> Marta saying looks great, but the crumb is not so great. Yep. I think it could have fermented a little bit longer. And then Angelica is also saying, this is a low hydration dough. It has more dense crumb, yes. So if you go for less hydration, it's always going to be a little bit more dense, but still, I think if you bulk ferment and proof on point, then it still can be a little bit more fluffy. And then we have Jose here from Spain also joining in. Hi, Jose, nice to meet you again. Nice to see you again. Hello. <laughs> okay, good job. So. Well done. This bread looks very good. I would say you did a great and amazing bread. Well done. Maybe just ferment a little bit longer. The key to make amazing sourdough is really to control the fermentation process. That's going to make you nail every bread. So thank you, Fabrizio. Thanks for the submission. Good job. And now we have uh, Caroline. Caroline Gisha. 70% hydration, all these one hour stretch and fold, finish ferment eight hours overnight in fridge. Okay, very interesting. Not much of an ear, maybe because of a long proof time and probably I should have left it in the bake a little bit longer. So I'm always afraid I'm going to burn it. So never get that dark crusty loaf that I want. So whether my bread gets chosen or not. Okay, awesome. So from Florida, nice to have you on the stream as well, Caroline. Let's have a look at this bread. <laughs> nice. Good looking bread. So what are you all thinking about this bread? What could have changed? What could have improved? This is the bread from the bottom. And here we have a look at the crumb. Looking great. <laughs> nice. So one more time, Caroline's submission here from the top. We have some nice blisters here on the crust. That's looking great. Not that much of an ear, I guess. Um, and then followed up here by the crumb. <laughs> <sighs> so
So what do you think? I'm very curious. I think I know what could be improved on this bread, but I want to see what you have to say. <laughs> Joss. Uh, Christopher is saying, not so much of an open spring, but looks nice in the crump. I agree. Joss is saying, uneven air pockets probably need better shaping. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And then Rick is saying, not shaped tightly enough. And Caro is saying, a bit under fermented. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, just a note on the under fermented. If we just, can I zoom into this picture? Oh. Oops, sorry, <laughs> fail. <laughs> I'm back. I accidentally pressed Command W and that closed um, the window. Uh, fail. <laughs> Somebody turned off the light. No, I'm back. I actually just wanted to zoom into this picture and to just make it a little bit larger. There we go. <laughs> Kao <laughs> uh, was saying pro streamer. Yes, pro streamer. I'm doing this for life, you know. <laughs> Control W. Uh, good one. <laughs> yes, I'm back. <laughs> Great, we see you again. <laughs> uh, the classic cry farting, maybe not on the live stream, but in the videos. I don't know if you actually saw it in the last video. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I wanted to talk about the no, uh, the comment that it should be that was a little bit under fermented this bread by Caroline, and on the shaping comment, I think Caroline, you fermented this bread perfectly on point. The reason why I'm saying this is you have all those tiny small pockets of air right here, and this is a sign that the fermentation was done. Very nice. <laughs> uh, I think you need to do some live cry farting. <laughs> uh, and Anne is saying, I'd be happy if my bread looks like this. And I really think this bread is amazing. And you fermented it on point, Caroline. And um, one thing that I think that you should improve, though, on your dough, which I also noted when I was baking this whole wheat bread, the video which I just published yesterday, is that I did not create enough dough strength. And I think that might be the reason. I think you should be creating a little bit more dough strength. Then you will be getting more upwards of a spring. At the same time, what you can do is also to not have a large pocket uh, like this here inside of your crumb, what you want to do is you want to give it a little bit of a tighter shaping. This also creates more dough strength and makes sure that your bread springs more upwards inside of the oven. And then you will be getting that amazing ear. I mean, you almost had it, but still, <clears throat> I think a little bit more dough strength would help and you would definitely be getting that ear. And don't change anything else on the process because that crumb looks amazing. <laughs> So, good job. Yes, Kara saying at the bottom it looks a bit denser. Yep, you're right. Here it looks a little bit denser, but overall with the crumb, I would be very happy. I think this is fermented very nice. <clears throat> Caroline is saying, good to know. Thank you so much for the feedback. You are welcome. Thank you, everybody, for your feedback on this bread. Um, we figured this out. Good job. All righty, let's go to the next bread. Jacob, gluten tag, gluten abend. <clears throat> so 400 grams wheat flour type 550, 100 grams of whole wheat, um, water, sourdough, and salt looking great. Okay, let's have a look. So somebody from Germany, we Germans always use this declaration type 550 
random fact in case you're wondering. So the types in Germany are defined by if you burn 100 grams of that flour, how many minerals are still remaining? So the higher the number, the more minerals. For whole wheat, there is no specification labeled on the bread. Um, and some people that come to Germany think that bread flour is, I think, T800 in Germany, but that's actually not the case. So if you come to Germany, the flour you want to bake with typically is a T550. That's the flour you want. OK, did I just open up the link already? <clears throat> Here we go. Bradco Dr. Dope. Ooh. What do you think? What do you think about this amazing bread? <laughs> Please drop your comments. Okay, and I'm just seeing one very, very interesting comment by Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. <laughs> what about autolization? Is it now obsolete? <clears throat> So why is he asking that? In my last video for whole wheat, I skipped the autolysis completely. And then I did an experiment before. And in that video, I concluded that the autolysis was not required. Now, there needs to be done more experimentation on this, of course. But I think if you bulk ferment or if your full fermentation process is 10 hours, then you don't need that autolysis. However, as I was baking a lot in summer, and in summer times it's warmer, your bulk fermentation is shorter. If you're living in the tropics where it's very hot, then you still might uh, want to be doing an autolysis. To do more experiments, I need to increase my temperature and check what happens if I shorten the bulk fermentation time. Uh, what's going to happen? Do you still need that autolysis or not? So that's actually something that I'm working on. How can I build my own uh, proofer? a video uh, coming out soon, I hope. I still need to tinker a little bit. I can just tell you it's going to be a badass proofing box, including night vision. Now, you might be wondering why night vision. Um, yeah, that's something that I need to reveal then when it's the moment. <laughs> OK, so how do I? Let's go back to this amazing bread by Jacob, Insane Oven Spring. <laughs> JW is saying applause. Caru is saying insane oven spring. Good job. And Alexander also insane oven spring. <laughs> oven spring broke the scoring too much. <laughs> oven spring. <laughs> ah, Christian is saying, is this from you or from a bread of other friends? Everybody was able to submit their breads today on a post, and we are reviewing those breads together. <laughs> Um, so very rustic look. I agree. So Rick is saying very rustic look. I like the look of this bread. <clears throat> Just look at this insane oven spring. And did you see that crumb? <laughs> that looks so good. So comments, feedback, what could be improved on this bread? I'm very curious what you have to say. Marta is saying, agree with Rick. So, and Rick was saying, very rustic look. I totally agree. Let's have a look again at that scoring pattern. So probably, <clears throat> Jacob, you sliced it right there and then you did a few more incisions and then it just burst it out. <laughs> <laughs> CRT is saying, keep doing whatever you're doing, Jacob. You nailed it. <laughs> Stefan Bauer saying, looks great. Maybe more deep scores for more even rise. Yep. And Simon saying, not much, looking so good. <laughs> Super Bernd is saying, holy dough. <laughs> Caroline, love the deep dark color. Is that from the flour or the bake? Um, I would say that's probably both from the flour and also from the bake. The question is always how long you want to bake. <clears throat> I would say the first 25 minutes of your bake are set. You want to have steam while you bake. However, the time afterwards, I would say maybe another 10 minutes without steam is the minimum. And then the time afterwards, because so many people are asking me for how long do you bake? And I sometimes even forget to say this because I just bake until I see that my bread has the desired color. 
Now, this depends on what uh, you want to serve your bread with. Let's say you would be making a soup and you would want to make a very soft bread, then you would not want to bake your bread as long. You might even want to be baking your bread all the time with steam. However, if you want your bread to be the star of the evening dinner, for instance, then you want your bread to be a little bit more rustic, a little bit darker. So then just bake it for a little bit longer. But of course, this is also personal preference. The way to know that your bread is done, the easiest way is to just use a thermometer. And it's done, I don't know the Fahrenheit amount, but that's 95 degrees Celsius or 92 degrees Celsius maybe, then your bread is done. And then afterwards you can just bake it for a longer period of time to get it a little bit darker. Hope that helps. <laughs> Alexander is saying, would a different deeper scoring pattern have made the crust look cleaner? Yes, probably. Um, that would have helped with the crust a little bit. But of course, this is also looking very wild and very rustic. So I think this one is, you did everything great here, Jacob. Seriously, um, not much to say. You really, really nailed it. I would say this is one of the best breads I've seen so far with German T550 made. So good job, kudos. Well done. <clears throat> so Mislav is saying, Hello, Mislav. <laughs> Been watching your channel. Okay, let's have a look at the picture directly. My take on the Trevor Wilson Champlain sourdough. That's the bread that Mislav has been baking. No picture of the crumb. What do you think? Do you prefer to bake a boule or a batard? That's always a tricky question, I think. Um, <clears throat> Marta, was it related to this one already? I like the color of this bread. Yes, I think the color is looking great. Um, Rick is saying, well, based on what I was saying before, 207 Fahrenheit guideline internal temperature. Yep, <clears throat> I think that's great. And Jose is saying 95, 96 degrees Celsius. Yes, yes, I think that's correct too. I would say for darker flowers or for whole wheat, you want it done a little bit, we want the temperature to be a little bit higher, but for bread flour, it could be a little bit um, lower. So Mario is saying kudos, Jacob. Ah, right, that was the previous one. And now here, this one, that looks good. Christina is saying looks good. <laughs> Mark is saying bitard. So in case you don't know, um, the round breads are called bulls. And the ones which are a little bit longer are called the batards. And it doesn't really, there's not that much of a difference. You make them from the same dough. The only thing is the shape. Me personally, I prefer the batards a little bit because it's easier to slice them. But that's just my personal opinion, of course. <laughs> uh, Rick <clears throat> Lamb is saying, Wilson's Champlain is a good method. 75% hydration, I think. Yep. So. I think based on the scoring and everything, you really nailed this bread. It's looking very good. I would need to ch see the crumb in order to be able to tell you whether you might have fermented too little or too much. But I think in general, this bread looks great there. Um, yep. Jose is also saying it one more time here. Very nice loaf. It's holding high. No pancake or UFO. Good work. I completely agree. Keep doing what you're doing. This one turned out really, really nice. <clears throat> and now next up comes Joss. So no need whole wheat sardo, almost 50% whole wheat, 30% all purpose, some wheat gluten, 80% hydration, no need version with overnight fridge final proofing. Okay, no Dutch oven, so I used the poor man's version using steam bath in the oven, still cannot get that ear. Any more tips? Danke. Let's have a look. <clears throat> what Joss has been baking. Nice looking bread here. Oh, beautiful crumb. Nice. Oops, what happened now? Let me reload this and zoom out a little bit. Like this. There was an error. <laughs> So what do you think about this bread by Joss? Just going back to the post one more time. <clears throat> Interesting. You 
uh, tweaked your flour by adding some uh, vital wheat gluten, still cannot get that ear. Any more tips? Going back, the full bread, not that much of an ear. But look at this crumb here. What do you think? <laughs> Marta is saying, I like this bread. Rick is saying, lovely crumb. Boss, nice whole wheat bread. Um, cooking with Lewis, really nice crumb. 50% um, wholemeal is the challenge. So, yep, the crumb looks perfect uh, to me. <clears throat> so the question is, if the crumb looks perfect, if the crumb looks perfect, why didn't Joss get that ear? So that's uh, that's a valid, totally valid question. And I just want to ask you, why do you think when the crumb is as perfect as this, why don't you get that ear? Jose is saying, nice crumb ear is not the most important. I think you're right there, Jose. I mean, it's not the most important, but just from a visual perspective, it's very nice. Plus that extra consistency you get when you bite into that ear, it's just very delicious. <laughs> Lisa Essentials photo. Oh no, we were already talking about your bread. You might have to rewatch the stream uh, later. You got some very good feedback there. You were making raviolis, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan Bau, the bread looks great. Deeper scoring for bigger ear. Joss is saying, need to cut deeper. <laughs> uh, Kenny is saying, heat of the oven. Very interesting comments here, everybody. <laughs> Joss is saying, but more ear makes it pretty. Yes, it makes it a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit prettier. Oven not hot enough. Steam. Oh, I think. We are getting there. I think this is one of the reasons. This might be one of the reasons. <laughs> Maybe use a pot from Super Bernd. <laughs> I love your name, Bernd. Such a German name, Bernd. <laughs> so, okay, now what my my thoughts on this bread. First of all, you nailed that crumb. You fermented really, really nice. Just have a look at all those nice pockets of air here. I think the crumb is perfect. So this is already the hardest part, I think, of the whole sourdough making game. You fermented really on point, and that's good kudos. So keep doing that. I think <clears throat> when looking at how you scored, I think the way how you scored is probably not the issue here as well. I think you did that right as well. I mean, of course, I don't see exactly how you do this, but I think the issue is a lack of those strengths. Um, the reason I'm saying this is that if you steamed the way you did, I was also thinking about the steaming method. Maybe you don't have enough steam inside, but still, even if I don't steam, even if I don't steam, my bread still sometimes gets that ear and gets that oven spring if the dough is really strong and just wants to rise upwards. So what you want to do is maybe do a little bit of more kneading at the start and like one hour approximately before you shape, just try to do another stretch and fold or so. That's going to help. That's going to give your dough a little bit more dough strength. And when you shape, shape your bread a little bit tighter. Give it a tighter shape. And that's going to make sure that you also have more dough strength, pretty much. And I think the combination of this more dough strength, that's going to get, get, get you that ear. Um, and if not, then very likely, I think the other possible cause could be a lack of steam. But um, give it a shot. Please let me know if that works. <laughs> Just saying thank you. My pleasure. You are most welcome. <laughs> So, great. Good looking breads right here. Now we have Stephen Church. Used your overnight recipe. Only thing I did differently was after mixing and short 15 minute rest. Did a quick bench knead and left overnight. You don't have a Dutch oven, so if you've been struggling with getting appropriate steam in your oven. And now you have been using a turkey roasting pan. This is really good engineering right there, using a 
large turkey roasting pan, you don't need to buy a fancy Dutch oven. Seriously, you can just use a pot, whatever you want. It's going to give you amazing oven spring as well. Let's have a look, Stephen. I'm very curious to see what you have made. <laughs> Good job. Very nice. Very nice looking bread. A good looking crumb. What do you think about this bread? <laughs> I wonder if we've actually messed with the image or algorithm today because we've just published so many bread pictures. Uh, probably it's not. It's too little, I guess. <laughs> but you even got 10 upvotes here on image or so good job. <laughs> So, <clears throat> now, on the previous bakes, just two more interesting comments I wanted to share. On the previous bake um, by Andrea, the added gluten, if you do this, it needs more time, much more time. Interesting thought. Uh, maybe this is something you could investigate as well, Joss. And then Gregor is saying, is it possible that you to get great oven spring, but your dough mightn't be on the edge of over fermenting and doesn't have power to get that ear. Yep, <clears throat> that could also be, that could also be, yep. If you over ferment, you also likely don't get that ear. But now onto the next bread. <laughs> Joss is saying, <clears throat> not bake long enough. Cooking with Lewis is saying, <laughs> needs more color and fermentation and risky Rizgi B1Z, Rizgi B1Z is saying too blonde. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Pot Potty Plotter is saying better than mine. <laughs> Charles is saying needs more heat and browning. <laughs> uh, beautiful, curious about the crumb appearing like a long vertical hole. So let's have a look at the crumb. <gasps> <laughs> Jose is saying five to ten more minutes bake to get that brownish crust. Nice. Danville is saying a little too pale. And then we have Adam saying needs more color. So um I think I think you're right. I think this is um based on the crumb. I think the crumb looks very good. It looks like it might have not cooled down enough before you were cutting it. Could that be the case? But other than that, I think the crumb looks nice. You have good pockets of air there, nice signs of fermentation. I would probably bake it a little bit longer, but then again, this also depends on what you like. Some people like the bread as blonde as this is, but that's of course your own personal preference. I would also bake it for five to 10 more minutes. <laughs> Oh, Freerider is asking about a Trieber brot, which is a beer bread which you make uh, out of the leftovers when brewing beer. Oh, that's a com complicated question. We need to have a look at that in detail later. <clears throat> I'm also currently having a batch of beer being brewed. <laughs> Obi is saying, you had a question with your moldy starter. Okay, I'm going to have a look at that later and I will reply to you on YouTube, okay? Um... Indeed, color means short baking time. Uh, and then also saying it comes down to taste. Yes, so I think you did everything great. You might wanna be just eventually, <laughs> you might just wanna be eventually proofing this a little bit longer. I think the crumb could be a little bit more open, but other than that, I think you're doing really great on this bread. Um, you're very close. Just if you can repeat this 10 times, after each other, then you uh, completely cracked the bread coat to baking bread. Uh. <laughs> so Stephen, I think good job, well done. And thank you so much for the submission. <laughs> Anne is saying, how do you get info on those live broadcasts? You saw it by accident. You can press, there's this bell button, I think next to your subscription. Uh, when where it says you're subscribed to the channel and then you can say that you want to get a notification for instance But then you would also get a notification when I'm trying to sell you a washing machine. So <laughs> Rüdiger Bartz 
Ein Landbrot. A, uh, how do you say this? A country bread. This is a German country bread. I'm very excited to check this out. So what do you think about this German style country bread? <laughs> I'm really curious uh, to see what you have to say about this bread because this is a little bit tricky as well. <laughs> Just to give you some insights on this bread, what kind of bread is this? I would say the majority of breads we have here in Germany is typically a mixture of rye and wheat. So I'm not sure about Landbrot, but typically it's either named Mischbrot, which is mixed bread, or Graubrot, gray bread, which is pretty much the same. I think Landbrot is probably also very similar. It's typically a mixture of 50% wheat and 50% rye. <laughs> <clears throat> Ubi saying, I would buy it, looks nice. <laughs> Daniel is saying, wow, so round. Rick is saying, um, beautiful shape and spring. Caroline is saying, <clears throat> dense crump, wonderful looking. Uh, JW saying, is that a sourdough based bread? <laughs> Gregor saying, is it from. A sour discard, denser crumb, and not much open. <laughs> really nice. Yep, yep, yep. Looks German. <laughs> so, <clears throat> underbaked. Oh, this is actually a good point from Imad. Underbaked. <laughs> These essential saying looks wonderful and tasty. Daniel saying great color on the outside. So, Let's have a look at it again. I think from the color, this is perfect. Now, from the crumb perspective, the question is, can you get a more open crumb from this style of bread? And the answer is nope, you can't. If you're using rye, rye is very, very sticky. Rye actually hinders gluten development. It's not gluten-free, but rye itself does not like to be put into a gluten network, pretty much. It, it hinders gluten development. Also, fun fact, if you are in a large mill and they are milling rye flour, sometimes they just have to clean their mill afterwards because also when milling rye flour, it's already so, so sticky. So this crumb here, I would say it's the maximum openness you can get for a bread which has at least 50% rye or so. So <clears throat> I think you really did everything right here um, on this bread. There's not really much more to do here. That looks to me like the perfect Landbrot. Good job. I would guess it's probably even maybe 75% wheat and less rye, but I'm not 100% sure. This is <clears throat> an amazing German bread. So congratulations. Uh, good job, Rüdiger. Daniele. Hello, Herr Doktor. This is the fourth bread you made using your no need recipe. <laughs> The fourth bread ever. Last time I used one fifth whole wheat flour and the rest Manitoba flour with 13% protein. Okay, let's have a look. Daniele, very excited. <laughs> the bread patient. <laughs> look at this bread <clears throat> from Daniele. This is his fourth attempt ever, seriously. <laughs> A beautiful ear right here. Look at that. The dough cracked a little bit open here on the side. Wow. <laughs> nice. Fourth bread. <laughs> yep, this is also what I was thinking. Whoa. <laughs> Boss is saying, nice. Just saying for the fourth attempt, not bad at all. Rick is saying, really nice loaf. Anne is saying, beautiful. <laughs> Adam is saying, amazing performance. Regarding this is your fourth attempt. Oh, yes. <laughs> My fourth loaf did not look nearly as nice. My fourth loaf looked really crap. And this one for the fourth loaf, seriously, I'm very impressed. <laughs> Daniel is saying, 
he would like to gain a little bit more height. <clears throat> so actually, that's a very good comment. How to get a little bit more height on this spread. Very interesting. So I think, let me just have a look back here at what you were writing. Oh, you were, okay. Overnight fridge proof and the next morning in Dutch oven at 230 degrees Celsius covered for 25 minutes. Um, going back to this bread, based on the recent experiments that I have done, try increasing the temperature for the first 25 minutes of the bake. It's gonna give you a little bit more vertical oven spring. And one thing you can do, since this is a no need bread recipe, <clears throat> if you want, you can do, be, do a stretch and fold, maybe an hour before or so you're shaping or work a look, little bit on your shaping strategy. Shape a little bit tighter. That's also gonna give you a little bit more vertical oven spring. So hotter oven at the start, maybe one stretch and fold if you like before you shape, one hour before or so, and then turn on the heat a little bit hotter in your oven. That should do the trick. <laughs> <clears throat> Bas is saying natural talent. Yes, so, so true, natural talent. Just saying need more dough strength. Yes, uh, so more dough strength would help, but since this is a no knead bread recipe, you don't add that much strength. The dough is also a little bit stiffer, but just everybody have a look. For a stiff dough like this, you get this amazing crumb. So um, just by being lazy, just by waiting, just by fermenting on point, I think this is, that's why I like to do a no knead bread recipe because you just focus so much on the fermentation aspect and that's the most important thing you can do when baking. <laughs> and Rick is saying shaping is the art, I think. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Good job. Oh yes, Jose. I would not be doing the stretch and that's a totally valid comment. I would not be doing the stretch and fold directly before shaping, but I would be doing it like, like an hour before shaping or so. This just gives some additional dough strength. If you were to do that directly before shaping, then you would be deflating your dough a little bit. So you have to be careful with this. I would try to do it not anywhere not one hour before shaping. No, you should, um, yeah, don't do it too close to shaping or else you will be deflating your dough a little bit. <laughs> and Adam is saying, don't change too much. You're basically there. Yep, 100%, I agree. Good job. <laughs> Jackson is saying, my star is named Carl. And Caroline is saying, I haven't named my star yet. We'll have to think, Caroline. I think just by giving your starter name, your bread is already going to become a lot better. So this is something you definitely have to do. <laughs> <clears throat> what do you think about pre-shaping? Yes, if you wanna make multiple loaves at the same time, you always have to divide and pre-shape. Um, pre-shape, I think, is one of the hardest things you have to do during sourdough baking. It's not very easy, especially to beginners. So if you start baking, I would always recommend you to just bake one loaf at a time and skip pre-shaping. But if you want to be making multiple, then you just have to divide and pre-shape. For pre-shaping, it's essential that you don't flour your surface. You want to be using your surface, your dough sticking to the surface to make a really nice round loaf. <laughs> Good job. So Daniela, seriously, well done. Good job. Thank you so much for the submission. Very, very good bread. <laughs> okay, let me reload the page and see if there are other submissions. And do we have some more submissions? Did I miss somebody? Steven, we still have Maverick. Maverick just added a comment here to the post. Let's have a look, Maverick. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> 75% bread flour, 25% dinkle flour, 70% hydration. Your tips have helped me to improve the good oven spring. So let's have a look here. Maverick, what do you think about this bread here? <laughs> Jose, just great comment here as well. Pre-shaping also evens the crumb. Yes. So 
if you feel that your prompt is too wild, then pre-shaping is going to help you. So excellent comment. But if you're a chaser of that super wild crumb, then pre-shaping also has a negative effect. <laughs> wow. Maverick. Seriously. I'm just going to be, ah, can I zoom a little bit in? Nope. Not so much possible. Have a look here. You have amazing blisters here on your crust. I think you really fermented this one on point. This is really excellent oven spring. <laughs> so great comments here from everybody. Kaur saying nice. Rick saying very pretty. Joss is saying nice. Gregor saying good oven spring. <laughs> Kaur saying looks like low hydration, but fluffy. Anna saying very nice. Awesome oven spring, both look amazing. Perfect oven spring. So Maverick, I can only agree with what the others have been saying. This one looks perfect. Just keep doing what you're doing. This is the perfect sourdough bread. <laughs> Obi saying, you have a long way to go. Uh, you will get there, Obi. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a picture of the crumb. Maybe the next time. <laughs> so seriously, Maverick, good job. I wouldn't know what to improve here. OK, one more picture by Danville. 20% rye. Let's have a look at what Danville has been baking. Nice ear. What do you all think about this bread by Danville? <laughs> Looking great. Just write your comments. I'm just answering a few other questions here. <clears throat> Anne was asking. Anne was asking, where was that? When you say perfect fermentation, what part is that? So that's also sometimes a little bit confusing because perfect fermentation is both the bulk fermentation after you add your starter, and then after you shape your bread, the proofing stage starts. This is also fermentation. So fermentation is the whole process from start to finish, pretty much. And you have the variable bulk fermentation, which you need to optimize. And then you have the variable proofing, which you need to optimize. And for the bulk fermentation, you should look for a certain size increase in your dough, which depends a little bit on your flour. And then during the proofing stage, the most reliable way to say that your dough is done proofing is to use the finger poke test. Just poke your dough and see the small den. And when it recovers very slowly, your bread is pretty much ready to be baked. Now, some people like to move their dough to the fridge for a little bit. Um, that way they can just control when exactly they want to bake. When you use the fridge, I recommend you to play with maybe 24 hours inside of the fridge, or if you want your bread to be bakeable faster, maybe an hour at room temperature and then 12 hours inside of the fridge. Hope that answered your question, Anne. <laughs> <clears throat> so, Joss is saying, looking great as well. Gavin is saying, nice. Danville, seriously, the people are saying you did an amazing job. 20% rye, good colors. <laughs> Joss is saying, would be nice if we could see the inside. I would agree. Would have been nice to see the inside as well. Great, nice ears. <laughs> colors, thick ear, wild and lust, rustic. Ah, sorry, that was a comment. <laughs> And maybe the right one is not shaped correctly, but they look great. I would agree what Jose is saying. It looks like the right-hand one has not been uh, shaped so well. One thing that I see here, there is quite some flour here on top. Personally, in the past, I always suggested to use rice flour. But now what I like to do is I just like to give my, my dough a good rub with some of the main flour. Let's say it would be a bread flour bread. Then I would be switching to, or I would just use some bread flour and uh, wrap or give the dough a good rub and then place it inside of the banneton. This way you don't have those floury bits left in the end. Of course, it's just personal preference, but I, I kind of like it this way. <laughs> Joss is asking, why not rice flour? Because what happens with the rice flour, the rice flour is not being absorbed by the dough. The rice flour is a safe bet. It won't stick for sure. But then you have some, um, <clears throat> this doesn't look like rice flour, but then you don't have some white spots in the end 
on your bread. And I don't like them too much. So that's why I rather give my dough these days a good grub with some of the main flour of the dough. And that also makes sure that it doesn't stick to the vanatin. <laughs> so really good job. Just Ryan also is here. Just Ryan is also here saying spraying the top gets everything blistered and nicely colored after baking. Yep. And also with the rice flour, that won't work so well. Um, spraying it is not going to work as well with the rice flour because then you just have the rice flour. Yeah, you won't be able to get any blisters there. <laughs> Mislav is saying, oops, first of all, Gregor, I tried that instead of using rice flour and stuck to the Benetton. Oh, no, I'm sorry to hear. So if you have issues with fermenting too much, then the rice flour is the safe option. But I would say if you ferment on point, then not using rice flour is the better option. Just my personal opinion, of course. Mislav is saying, sorry, I have another bread in my submission. One was a bull and the other one that was a batard. I think it would be interesting to see the difference. OK, let's have a look one more time. Mislav, just reloading the page. Mislav. <laughs> So we saw this amazing bread by Mislav. Oh, look at this, everybody. <laughs> that was the bull. And now Mislav here coming in with the batard. Beautiful picture, by the way. Really looking nice. <laughs> Perfect picture. So what do you think? Last submission of today. <laughs> To me, <clears throat> this looks amazing. I would have loved to see the crumb though, but I think just look at this insane oven spring. Really, really well done here, Miss Love. <laughs> <laughs> looks like a porcupine. <laughs> nice spring and ear. <clears throat> Kara saying Instagrammable. Yep, 100%. <laughs> Very nice, rustic, very rustic and nice background of the photo. This is a winner. Um, shout Guadaus, looking good. <laughs> very, very, very good. Nice bread. So, Mislav, good job. <clears throat> looking very, very nice. Jackson is saying, can you do mine? OK, let's have a look. Did I miss your submission, Jackson? I'm so sorry if I did. I don't see anyone writing Jackson here. Jackson, I'm sorry. I don't see your submission. Maybe I'm just blind. <clears throat> Please post it. I will give you a separate uh, review on your submission, Jackson. OK? <laughs> oh, Potty, please don't give up. Uh, Mislav has obviously baked a few times. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I think we went through um, all the submissions. This has been a lot of fun. I missed your submission too, boss. That's so strange. Where have you submitted the submission? This. Hmm. Let me just quickly check one more time. I'm not seeing it as a comment on the post. <laughs> Maybe I am blind. OK, let me just sort by newest first and just try one more time. Ah, there we go. Interesting. I'm just seeing them now. I'm so sorry. After sorting by new, I finally see some of the submissions. They have been hidden. OK, so we still have a few more submissions to go then, it seems. So let's have a look and do some more bread reviews. <laughs> <laughs> boss, here we go. Sorry for missing that, boss. <laughs> oh, there are even a few more. How comes we didn't see them? <laughs> That's annoying. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> let's start with. I want to start with uh, a boss. There we go. Two pictures of the bread you back today. 50% whole wheat, 75% hydration. Google Photos. Mm. 
Looking great, boss. <laughs> so let's check the stats one more time. There was 50% whole wheat, 75% hydration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's check the bread one more time. Here we go. What do you think <clears throat> about this bread, everybody? What do you think could be improved? I like that this is 50% uh, whole wheat. That, of course, makes it a little bit more challenging, but that also adds amazing taste to the bread. Um, higher hydration would help. Uh, yes. Then the crumb would be a little bit less dry. That's for sure, I think. Mm -hmm. Maybe more precise fermentation or shaping could help. Mm -hmm. And I think... Uh, Cooking with Lewis gave an excellent comment here, more dough strength. I agree. And uh, Rick Lamp is saying 50% whole wheat, which absorbs more water. Mm -hmm. I think this is also the tip I would give you. Maybe go a little bit higher in terms of hydration because whole wheat soaks up quite a lot of water and do a little bit more dough strength development. That's definitely going to help your bread. But other than that, I think it looks pretty pretty good already so you really did a great job on this one okie dokes so yeah good job boss well done let's have a look at uh simon simon only started baking with soda this year pretty happy with this bread however the oven spring wasn't very impressive would love to get some feedback so, Simon here. <laughs> Great breads you made there, Simon. Two breads baked in one pot. Was that a mistake? <laughs> Look at this. Wow, this looks so rustic. I really love the look of this bread. Looks very, very, very good. Seeds, yep, yep. <laughs> Very good, Brad. So please drop your comments. I'm just going to be answering some other comments at the same time. Abbas, you are most welcome. It was a pleasure to review your bread. Good job. Keep baking. Nicely done. Joss is saying, if you're making a 100% whole wheat, um, based on my tests, you could probably with less hydration, but then it's not as awesome. You have to need, you have to build a lot more dose strength. As far as I could see, I had to build probably 50% more dough strength than on my bread flour breads. I really had to need a lot to get that gluten network developed. <laughs> Hope this helps. Petra. Hi, Hendrik. Hope you spelled it correctly. Yes, you did. Hendrik, that's correct. <laughs> Yesterday, I've watched you 100% whole wheat flour. I'm wondering if I got it right. Did you skip the orderlies at all? Would I get a bigger ear if I skip it? Yes, so I think my finding was that if I bulk ferment for around 12 hours or so, which I currently have to because it's just so cold inside of my kitchen, then I don't need to do an auto lease. So for cold temperatures, for slow fermentation, no auto lease is required. I need to uh, research a little bit more why it's different for bread flour in comparison to whole wheat flour. But I got the best results for whole wheat without an auto lease when my fermentation time was around 12 hours. Hope that answers your question. Caro is saying seeds. Daniele is saying wild. <laughs> Rick is saying just beautiful. Joss is saying needs more dose strength. Yes, I think you're right, Joss. I think you're right, yep. Looks really nice. When do you mix in the seeds? So you should be mixing in the seeds together with your sourdough starter. That's the point when you should be mixing in your seeds. <laughs> Mark is saying, like the seeds, looks awesome. <laughs> so Simon is saying, mix the seeds while kneading the bread first time. Yep. So good job. I think Simon... As Joss was saying, you could probably be building a little bit more dough strength here on this bread. That would help. So either 
build more dough strength at the start or around an hour before you shape them, try to do another stretch and fold and give it a little bit of a tighter shape, then you will be also getting more uh, oven spring. But I think based on the fermentation, you have good pockets of air and everything. You're doing many things right here. So just keep doing what you're doing. This is looking great. Good job. <laughs> um, <clears throat> CRT is saying fold in seeds during lamination for better dose strength. Also very interesting point to add the seeds a little bit later. Good job here, seriously. And now we have another one from Jackson Heritage. Here's my beginner sourdough, Jackson. Jackson's bread coming up next. What did he bake, this Jackson? And Jackson, why do you have such an amazing beard? I wish I had a beard like you. <laughs> Here's my beginner sourdough. Good job, Jackson. Nice. What do you have to say about this bread, everybody? I'm very, very curious. <laughs> very, very interesting. <laughs> Just Ryan is saying a little bit of a frisbee right there. Mm-hmm. Tricky camera angle. <laughs> so actually, maybe just Ryan is wrong. Maybe it's just a tricky camera angle that Caro is saying. <laughs> Liz Essentials, maybe a bit lack of strength. <laughs> I'd like to see the crumb. All submissions should have a crumb shot. I agree. Maybe for the next time, we should include that. All of them should have a crumb shot. <laughs> yes, the inside is missing. <laughs> Just looking around, just saying hard to see uh, without the crumb. So the flatbread like this can either typically be a lack of those strength, so you have to need more, you need to optimize your shaping in the end, or you over ferment it. So we can't really say because we're not seeing the crumb right now, but I would probably start with building a little bit more dose strength and then focusing on the fermentation process. Especially as a beginner, the fermentation process is what's going to make you a better baker. All the other parameters are not as important. The fermentation process is really the single most important parameter that you want to work on. <laughs> and Danville is saying, good start. Jackson, I totally agree with you. You really did great. <laughs> Christian is saying, how to get more dose strength. Uh, kneading, you have to knead more. So you can either do that by hand or you could be using a stand mixer, of course, if you wanted to. But more kneading is essential to build that great gluten network. <laughs> so you're most welcome, Christian. Oops. And we have one more submission from Christian. Your Roggen bread. Okay, upcoming from Christian, a German Roggenbread, a German rye bread. I'm very curious to see what's gonna hide behind this tab. <laughs> Boom, rye bread. <laughs> Christian, we would also need to see a crumb shot of this bread the next time. <laughs> to everybody who does not know German rye breads, this is pretty much how a German rye bread looks like if you're baking it inside of a loaf pan. Pro trick, amazing rye bread inside of a loaf pan. Go to a hydration of 95 to 100%. So 100 grams of flour, 100 grams of water. It's going to make you an amazing rye bread. It's going to be very, very wet inside. It's a really delicious bread. Personally, I love a rye bread like that. You can't knead it, you can't do anything with it. You just have to use a spatula to pour it inside of your uh, loaf pan. That's how you bake this amazing bread. Me personally, one of my favorite rye breads. <laughs> Adam is saying a proper German Scandinavian one. <laughs> 
Joss is asking, stupid question, does 100% rye bread is gummy versus airy crumb? So it's not gummy. It's just very, very, very dense. It's, uh, yeah, there's almost no pockets of air at all. But I wouldn't say it's gummy. Gummy would be a sign to me of not fermenting long enough. It's just very, very dense. <laughs> so hope this helps, Christian. <laughs> And I have one more submission. Oh, no, one more submission, which I saw, which I did not want to miss. That was the one from uh, sort by newest, new first. OK, and here we go with. Machi, Machi, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this was the one submission I missed. So let's have a look at Matze's uh, bread. Oh, Matze's bread coming up right here. What do you all think? <laughs> Georges, Jose, I can't see your submission. Nope, it's so strange. Um, you posted it on the post, right? I'm going to be checking in a little bit. <laughs> so, whoa. <laughs> Everybody, this is the bread. This is the bread you want to be baking. Seriously, you should be st starting to open up your own bakery, I guess. <laughs> Caro, I would eat. <laughs> Super duper. Tony is saying that's today's winners. <laughs> Beautiful. So, Matze, I hope I pronounced your name correctly now. I'm sorry if I did not. I think I would agree with the others. This one is looking really, really good. There is not much more to say, <laughs> this one is really looking perfect. <laughs> okay, ah, Jose, I see you now, Jose is here. <laughs> so Jose is an excellent baker, so I'm very curious to see what we see here. First one is colored with turmeric. The other one is using a small percent of purple corn flour. Okay, let's check this out. Ooh, everybody, what are you thinking about this perfect bread? <laughs> Looking amazing here, Jose. <laughs> Really pretty pattern. Seriously, nice. Oh, look at this. We even have a time lapse of this bread inside of the oven. <laughs> Jack is saying that's an alien bread. <laughs> <laughs> Am I on drugs or are there funny colors on this bread? Caro, you are probably on drugs. I think this really looks normal. I think the colors are not strange at all. It might be your drugs that you're taking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I oh I shake my dough, put it in the fridge overnight just to put it in the oven, watching it spread like a pancake. Photoshop, likely you have been over fermenting your dough. That's likely the reason. Try to bulk ferment a little bit less and also proof a little bit less. That should be doing the trick. <laughs> Drug bread, Jose. <laughs> Look at this crazy bread. <laughs> like cake, yep. Very fancy. Good job here, Jose. Nothing more to say. This is looking amazing. Although I think you probably could have proved it a little bit longer, I think, just based on the crumb here. 
maybe a few more minutes could have helped. But I think it's looking really amazing, really interesting, Brad. <laughs> Very good. Very nice. Ah, I hope I did not miss any other submissions. Okay, let's have a look at one last submission from Rage, Range Finder General. Not Rage Finder General, Range Finder General. <laughs> You're welcome, Jose. I think you really nailed it. It's just minor improvements. Good job, as always. <laughs> so the others have been chatting here about um, uh, the dough fermenting too much. That was the comment that I just highlighted. Yes, if your bread just after you took it out of the bed and just spreads out like a pancake, you have over fermented your bread. So during bulk fermentation, try to not go for an as high size increase. Go for a little bit less. You might also want to be working on your sourdough starter. That's also important. I always feed my starter with a one to five to five ratio. That makes sure that you have a nice and active starter. <laughs> okay, range finder general. That's the last submission of today because it's almost been one and a half <laughs> hours. <laughs> range finder general. French flutes. Okay, interesting. Oh, wow. Look at this incredible <laughs> oven setup. He really maxed out the oven space here with this bread. That's amazing. <laughs> Going back to the bread one more time. That's the final bread. <laughs> and here inside of the oven. What do you think about this insane oven setup? This must this has to be one of the craziest oven setups that I've ever seen. Seriously. <laughs> How many more breads could you get in there? Like 10 more breads? <laughs> <laughs> So this one looks very, very interesting. Um, Rangefinder General, I think your bread looks really great. Yep, looks pro. Maybe though, because of your setup inside of your oven, you are not able to build enough steam. And um, that's why you don't have that big of an ear here in this area. That's the only thing that I could think about I don't see the crumb now. Maybe next time include the crumb shot. But overall, I would say this one is looking great. Also, really big bonus points here for the way how uh, you put all those breads in the oven. So yeah, good job. Nicely done. OK, everybody, <clears throat> it's been almost one and a half hours. And I think that's good for now. Uh, sorry if we did not include your submission. I'm just going to be having a separate look through them now on the post, and I'll give you a personal review. It's been a lot of fun with you chatting about the breads. Great submission, so thank you so much. And um, yeah, let's have another show like this soon. This was a lot of fun. Um, I hope you also had fun. You learned something new. And as always, may the gluten be with you. Gluten Avent, happy baking. And... See you soon. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining. Take care. Bye, everybody. Cheers.